Okay, so this is the second video, kind of a follow-up to our background on surveying. Um, and what we'll be working through today is just some different methods of surveying. Um, specifically, we'll go through a differential leveling exercise um, based on using um, a laser level. And um, talk about the three different types of um, surveys that we can do specifically. Um, once we've gotten that background. So basically at our company we, we use a laser level. It looks fairly similar to this. Um, <clears throat> and we have a rod with the, the laser targeter on it. And they're clamp on target. So again, just setting up your equipment. Um, you have a tripod. Um, looks pretty similar to this. You can extend it out further down. Um, you set it up and you do want to get it fairly level. Um, as good as you can but it, it's not super important um, because once you screw on this top part and this is the level um, <clears throat> and you just kind of screw it in from the bottom um, once you turn it on it, it generally self levels um, if it's not getting it done in a fairly short amount of time then the tripod is probably not very level and so you should adjust that um, but it'll kind of level itself make a little bit of noise <clears throat> and then this port this part right up here will start spinning around and if you look you can see a little red kind of laser light and so it's sending out basically a flat plane um, 360 degrees um, of this laser and so basically that's your line of sight all the way around um, and again now we have our, our targeter laser targeter that we can move up and down the rod until it meets this laser line um, and then that's when it'll let us know um, that it's level and then we can read the rod position at that point. Um, so taking a look at the data sheet, um, so we mentioned these terms in the last video, um, but this is kind of all you'll need for the data sheet and mostly looking at these, these headings here. Um, so the station, um, generally this is the station along the roadway. Um, where we're marking these points. Um, so this is just generally a, a distance, a relative distance based on a starting point. Um, again, BS here is our back sight. And again, that's any sight, sighting um, or shot on a point of known elevation. Um, and here is IH is the instrument height, which at, at every position we set up our tripod and our instrument, we need to establish the height. Essentially, the instrument height is the height of this plane, the laser plane that's coming out of here. Um, FS is our foresight, um, and so that's a shot or a rod reading on a point of unknown elevation. And then just the ELEV, LEV is the actual elevation of any of these points. Um, so again, any of these BS, FS, these refer to rod readings whereas the instrument height and the elevation will be actual elevations. Um, that's how we calculate them, okay? So, kind of moving into the example. So we have an example landscape here. Um, so this is kind of a, a hilly area. <clears throat> Benchmark one is our point of known elevation. Um, and we want to get from here, and we want to know the elevation of benchmark two up on top of this hill. So, the question here is, is how do we do it? So we mentioned this laser level. All we have is a singular line of sight, which is a level plane. Um, so we're kind of at a loss here. So this is the limitations of our rod. Our rod can only go so high. Our instrument can only go so high. Um, and it has a single plane of view. Um, so the question is, where do we put it? Can we reach? the second point from there. Um, so we could try to set it here, but obviously that doesn't work. Um, we can move it up further, um, but then now we're, we're too high up for this rod, but we're still too low for that one. Um, so if we set it up well, we could finally reach the second rod, but we're still way too high over here. So the question is, what do you do and how do you go about doing this? Um, so what we're gonna do is walk you through the process of, of how to get at this. So the first thing we want to do, so we decided 
This is our point of known elevation, benchmark one. So we have to we have to shoot it first. So we're gonna just set it down here where we know we can hit this one. Okay. So we set up our instrument, we level it, and we have a, a line of sight. Um, and so we're gonna set our rod right on benchmark one, and we're gonna read the rod basically where this laser is pointing. Okay, so we set up our data sheet here. So our station is benchmark one. We know the elevation already, so this isn't a calculated value. This is a known value of 100 feet. And then we're gonna take a reading, a back shot, because again, it's a point of known elevation, and we're gonna read the rod at seven and a half feet. So we set our instrument height <coughs> is this back shot plus the elevation. So you can see that um, here that we know this point is 100, and we go all the way up here, and we add that seven and a half feet and come back, and that's the height of our instrument. So no matter which way we shoot, that's how high our instrument is. Okay, so now we've established essentially where in the world, for elevation-wise, where our instrument is. Okay, so now we can go forward. Now we can shoot other things and progress down the road because we've established where our instrument is elevationally. Okay, so now we switch over to foresight. So we're going to shoot points of unknown elevation. <clears throat> so sometimes maybe there's just a feature out here that we need to, to get. We just want to shoot a generic foresight. There's no, maybe there's a, a pipe there or something. We just want to know the elevation. Well, we've already established our instrument height because we use this benchmark. So now we take a foresight, set the rod at this point where we want to know the elevation, and so we read the rod and say it's two feet. <clears throat> so it's obviously higher than this benchmark was, but it's still lower than obviously our instrument height. So we take our instrument height, and in this case we subtract the foresight reading to establish the new elevation of this point, 105.5 feet. Okay, so we know the elevation now of this point. All right. So that's just a generic foresight um, reading. So the next thing we want to do is keep moving down the road. We still want to make it to the second benchmark. But again, how do we do that? This is the limitation of our instrument here. We can only shoot it, say, this far. Um, so we're going to have to move the instrument, essentially. Um, somewhere between here and this second benchmark. So what we need to do is reestablish a point, reestablish a line of sight where we can see both the second benchmark, if possible, and the rod reading basically from this point. Okay, because we're gonna have to shoot to know the elevation and then move forward. So the way we do that is we reset, we're going to set our rod here, we're going to take another foresight to a point we call the turning point. So we're going to shoot here and say this foresight, we read the rod and it's 0.5 feet. And so now we can take that and again we'll subtract it from the instrument height and now we have an established elevation of 107 feet. So whenever we use a turning point. You can essentially use in any spot um, on the road or, or anywhere out in the field, but you want to have a point generally that, that you can 100% identify. So a concrete corner, uh, a manhole cover, um, something of that nature. Um, so you know you can set that rod exactly on that same point um, when you're turning around the other direction. Um, so from that point, now we have an established elevation of our turning point. Now we have, again, another point of known elevation. Um, and then again, from there, we could pick up and move our equipment and come back to this point because now it essentially acts as a benchmark. Um, <clears throat> And we can use it again when we 
we come back. Okay, sorry. So now we move forward. We're going to move our instrument. We still have the exact same turning point that we just shot, which we again, we know the elevation um, because we established it. We shot this foresight and we established the elevation. We move our instrument, reset it, re level it, and now we're actually going to shoot a back sight to that same turning point, same rod position, but it's a back sight because we're shooting to a point of known elevation to re establish our instrument height. And so it actually will show up in the same line here on our data sheet. So it's turning point one, we shot a foresight first, established the elevation. Now we shoot the backside of 11 feet, <clears throat> which again, we add to our elevation to get our instrument height. And this is IP2, IP1, this is instrument position. So the first one, and the second one. So again, the backside, <clears throat> we know the elevation of this point. TP1 is 107 feet, so we go up 11 feet to our rod reading, and that establishes our instrument height, our plane. Okay, so now that's 118 feet. And again, now that we have established that, we can turn around the other direction and shoot towards our benchmark, which I believe we should be able to hit from this point. Okay? So, here in this example now, that we've established the instrument height, we can shoot a foresight. And again, we're going to read the rod and say it's one foot. And we take that foresight of one foot, subtract it from our instrument height, because again, we're going down to the ground. And now we can establish our elevation of our second benchmark. So now it's 117 feet. Okay? So it's a pretty straightforward concept, um, but trying to keep straight. The equations here of a backside and a foresight and how we um, calculate the instrument height. Um, just a note here, there's a couple ways um, to mark this. You can either, I put it here for clarity, you can have a separate line that's your instrument position where all it will ever have is an instrument height. So it doesn't have any foresights, backsights because it's just the instrument. Um, and sometimes that's a little bit cleaner, a little bit um, easier to keep up with um, when you're just starting out. Normally, you would put the instrument height within this same call or within the same row of the benchmark you shot it to, and it keeps it a little bit more standard about <clears throat> where you shot, uh, where you established that instrument height. It's it's kind of obvious, but sometimes the numbers obviously aren't as clean as this, um, so it can get a little bit confusing. Okay, so we're going to stop here, <clears throat> um, and then we will talk about a couple of other processes um, and actually get into those three specific um, survey types in the next video.